And when did you suddenly think, I'm famous worldwide? When did that hit you with it? I don't know if you, I don't know if you think that on that. See, the Beatles went to the States and opened the door yeah. for us to get in. Yes. Once we got there, I thought their store ain't going to close. Mm. I'm still going to go to the States. We did the States, we did Canada. Then we came to Australia, New Zealand in about 1964, 65 with Dusty Springfield, um, Brian Poole, yeah. Gene Pitney. Great show, great fun. Came back from New Zealand. I remember they said, what's it like, you know, touring the world? I said, well, I never thought to do it. Mama said, but it's smashing. I'm getting paid to enjoy myself mm. and travel first class, best hotels, meet great people, lovely, I mean, dear friends, and I'm getting paid for it. I said, it's fantastic. And my mum said, well, that makes you a worldwide North Star. And my dad said, said, yes, it does. She's a proud. My son is known all over the world. <laughs> and that's when you think, maybe they're right. Maybe we are known. And it is a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. Because as the years go on, Jared, the people you meet are your friends. So no matter where they go in the world, the phone rings in my hotel. Hi, Jared, how are you doing? We'll be over to see you, blah, blah, blah. And it's party time again. Everybody comes along, yeah. and that's the bonus. So you Senior never realised <laughs> yeah. you never realised how many cousins you had uh, as you toured the world, or oh, how many people <laughs> were in my class at school. <laughs> my class was the biggest school in the world. Four thousand people were in it. <laughs> Jenny, I was in your class. I said, "No, you went." Yeah, they think I'm stupid. I knew everybody in my class. No, I was. I said, "You went in my class," but it's great. You had a thousand people in your class and four thousand cousins <laughs> from some relation. Well, it's great. <laughs> Now the next thing, of course, is you had that terrible dilemma. We've got to do it again. You know, once you've got yeah. there, how do you do it? Yes. Now, how do you do it for a second time? I know. And now you called Mitch Murray on the phone and said, Mitch got rung a... me, actually. Yeah. Mitch said, Jerry, I've got your second hit record. I said, what's it called? He said, I like it. He said, <laughs> I'll play it to you. So I said, okay, I like, I like the title. Yeah, I thought, that's yeah. nice. How do you know I like it? And he came and played the song. Mm. And then I said, yeah, we'll do that. And Brian Epstein said, yes, I think that's right. Uh, which we did, and of course that just shot straight into the number one. So spot. you walked into uh, the studio, Abbey Road, with, with Abbey Road, with a lot more George confidence Martin. this time. Yeah, 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 because we'd lost that panic. Yes, because even if it didn't happen, at least mm. we had a number one, which was tremendous. Because the Beatles' first record only got to number seventeen, "Love Me Do." So I thought, I've had Be the Beatles. Hey, John, sod <laughs> off. We got my mama, mama, and all that. The gagging. Yeah. So I thought, if the one, if this one doesn't make it. We've had a number one. To tell my kids, I had a number one record. So we weren't panicking about it. Put I Like It Down, went to number one, uh oh. Two number ones, uh oh. Panic. We need a third. Yes. Nobody's ever done a third number one record or had the first three records number one. Then you panic. Oh, what do you do? We just recorded uh, Walk Alone for our LP. For those younger listeners, an LP was a big, massive mm, thing with yeah. plastic, <laughs> not a little. Yeah. And on it, I'd put Walk Alone because I loved the song. Yeah. I'd heard it in Carousel. And uh, George Martin said, uh, it might be a bit slow and Brian Epstein, stick with the mm. happy hammies. I said, no, let me do it because if I can get a ballad away, that opens the field mm. for anything because I love singing ballads. Mm. So they said, well, be it on your head. So I said, okay. And we put the record out and we got to the moment in three weeks and I rung them up and went nah nah, nah. <laughs> so we had a first record three number ones and it was a record yeah. nobody had ever done it before yeah. and it stayed that way till a great band from Liverpool uh, Holly Holly Johnson had it with his band and they got three number ones as well that thing about being a Liverpudlian that uh, the explosion of bands mm -hmm. that was quite remarkable wasn't it but yes and no really yeah, because in Liverpool it's a seaport so in the seaport, you get boats and people from all over the globe with music. So as a kid, you're brought up with music. You walk past any pub on the dock road, there's different sounds. So music was there. And as kids, we wanted to play. You either boxed or you did music. I tried both. I preferred music. I boxed for seven years and that was quite sufficient. But I, so I wanted to stay in music. So you had little bands. You had fellas had guitars. Yeah. So. It had been going off for years and years and years. And when we had the hit records, like the Beats and ourselves, these London agents said, oh, there is something outside of London. Let's go to this strange place called Liverpool and see what's happening up there. Yeah. They came up and went, wow, 
there's a thousand bands. Oh, God almighty, where have you all come from? And they said, hey, we have been playing been? for 15 years for Grand Singer Mad. But that was snobbery, wasn't it? There was a snobbery about Yes, there was. Liverpool. London thought they were the best thing in the world yes. until they came to us. We'd been, we, my band, we formed maybe 10 years before we had a hit record. You know, mm. So we all had it. And they thought, this is incredible. All these bands have just started up. I was like, get out of it. Mm. When we went on tour, we would have had you do and I like it before we did Walk Alone. And we were doing like 45 minutes on stage. They couldn't believe we could go on with just two hit records and play. 45 minutes of rock and roll, yeah. American rock, Jerry Lewis, Little Richard, Fats Domino, Rachel, and these, wow, easy to sing along with because it was simple music. And that was the beauty that people caught on to the hook lines, the fun of it. We weren't trying to change the world. They reckoned we did. I think we just changed the music and the thinking of the world, the kids saying, we can all do that. And that was, I think, the beauty of the music of that period. Do you stop sometimes and say, You've had a wonderful blessing, a wonderful life. Why me? Why me, Lord? I did once. I went for an operation on my finger. And uh, I actually had a bad trip and uh, went under and came back. And then I thought, what's he brought me back for? Because I've had my three number ones, I've had this, I've done that. What has he brought me back for? And that's the only time I really question it. Otherwise, I just get on with it and do it. Um, no, I just go and do what I have to do. And I just think, I just wondered why he brought me back. You went close to death. You, uh, yeah, it went on the yes. Because yeah. I had a, <clears throat> I just heard you know, that swallowed some fluid into my lungs mm. and they didn't realise I had it. So, but they got me back. But Did you problem. see anything or a white light or nothing. anything like that? Nothing like that. I saw Pitch black. pitch black, no light, no tunnels, <laughs> no nothing. It's just not show business. And I tell you, I saw no flames either, <laughs> which I was pleased about. But that's the last time you've wondered about this big eternal question: Why, so, Jerry Master? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I thought, well, let's 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 get on with it and see yeah. what happens. I mean, I believe when your ticket's in the book, mm. you go. Do you think your cheery, cheerful, wonderful, uh, let's go and get them attitude has really played a huge part in your success? Sure. I think you've got to, you, know, you forget the bad times, you remember the good times and I think if you look forward all the time, here's what I want to do, here's what I'd like to do and do it. It's that sort of tunnel vision that you can get to say this is what I, as a kid of five I knew I wanted to sing mm. and entertain and I still to this day want to sing and you know, I will go on as long as the crowds are coming in and I can do it, I will sing till the end of time because I love it. I love the people, I love the audiences, I love meeting people, and people like yourself that we meet. It's brilliant for me. And as long as I can, I will stay on the stage singing and talking to wonderful people like you, Janet. So in the end, what is the most important thing in your life? What, after this lifetime? For me, my, my, the, my, uh, most of it is that family is my family. My wife, my two girls, my grandson, they're the ones that matter to me more well, than anything. comes down to that. Anyway. More than anything, yeah. yeah. They've kept me sane for 40 years in this lunatic business called rock and roll. Right. <laughs> They've kept me off the drugs and all the gear. Yeah. Uh, that's the most important thing in my life. And uh, if they're happy, you know, I can keep them happy. I'm a happy budgie. Always enjoy coming back here? I think it's pretty, yes, New Zealand is, is I love it, it's a great place. The people are great, I love the people here. And Paulie and I play golf. Mm. And we go down to the South Island and play down there. Uh, and it's great, the, the, the scenery is fantastic. Mm. I love New Zealand, it's great right. fun. Now I will come back any time. You're touring New Zealand at the moment. So all our Christchurch people, um, they'd love to see you. And Ashburton. That's right, Ashburton. Wow. Yes. That's on the uh, April the 3rd. Right. And you notice I'm not working on April the 1st. <laughs> <laughs> I would not accept that. I said, no way. <laughs> all Fool's Day. <laughs> so Wellington, you're in for a wonderful treat on April the 5th. Jerry Masters. And then I fly home. Wow. So my kids and my family. So what's, what's when you fly home? A couple of days rest and then somewhere else? Actually, or? yes. A couple of days rest and then we start our British tour, we're at tour which is called Jerry Cross the Mersey, oh, which wow. we do for a few months. And now I have a home in Spain and I will flit off to Spain to sit by my pool, yeah. glass of red wine, Spanish food, <laughs> mucho gracia, uh, kip. Well, look, it's been a joy for us to have you here today, Thank you, Jerry. Jerry. It's been um, nice speaking to you. Uh, our mothers prayed to uh, St. Jared Magellan. Yes. He was the uh, patron saint of expectant mothers. Yes, I did and, know that. Yes. And animals. And animals, yeah. yes. So that's how we got the name Jared. So are you the expectant mother or am I the animal? 
<laughs> we'll have to find out, Janet. God bless. Take care. Thank you very much G- indeed. Jerry Marsden, once thank again, you. thank you for coming on the weekend. God bless, Jerry. Thank, thank you. you.